All right, welcome to Building Visual Schedules, Building and Using Visual Schedules at Home. I'm Michael McGinnis, Coordinator of Student Success and Parent Support at Washington County Public Schools, and... My name is Samantha Polito, and I am the Autism Coordinator. Let's get started. What is a visual schedule? Well, a visual schedule is a way of showing upcoming events or activities visually. It may consist of objects, drawings, photos, icons, or words displayed in an organizational format. Okay, we've given you your visual schedules, which consists of a laminated poster board, indicator dots as to where to punch hanging holes, as well as indicator dots to indicate where you should put the Velcro uh, sticky circles and uh, clasps. So the schedule has actually two sides. Now you can work with just one side and have eight items throughout the course of a day in a to-do and a done column, but you could also choose to work with the other side, which has two columns, AM and PM, each with their own sub-columns of to-do and done. Now this one's already populated with some icons that I've chosen based on my typical day to try to give you a sense of what you would pick based on what's going on in your day. So first, we start with waking up. Uh, these are all pictures from my life, just to uh, sort of make it a little more relatable. Uh, first thing we do is wake up in the morning. It's bright and early at 4 a.m. Uh, part of my son's exceptionality is that he doesn't sleep well and no matter how late he goes to bed he's up at four so first thing we do is wake up and then we get dressed so uh, sometimes we have to incorporate a little bit of play with non-preferred activities incorporating the preferred into the non-preferred in order to increase compliance uh, with getting dressed so here uh, he has a little um, straw derby on there and uh, we're playing a little bit of dress up to um, encourage him to uh, get dressed in a timely manner. So then, um, this is sort of the same concept. Uh, here we are doing a little uh, brush our hair dance in the kitchen. Um, my son has a particular sensitivity. Those brush bristles scraping across his head are, he's extremely sensitive to that. So we actually found that um, getting some of those wiggles out um, activates the nervous system in such a way as that it desensitizes him a little bit to the experience afterwards of the brushing because he's already gotten some sensory stimulation and fed his sensory diet. Uh, so that's kind of why that looks like that. Next we take our medicine. Um, that's kind of self-explanatory. Then we sit down to breakfast. Um, breakfast nook here, his uh, sister there with him at the table. Next, uh, we wash our hands, and sometimes this becomes a little bit of play too, but uh, we wash our hands in the kitchen sink and uh, hopefully stay out of it most of the time. Um, then, um, we might do some chores. Uh, here we are just picking up a room of toys and clothes that are all over the floor. Uh, before going to school. So over here on the PM, picking them up in the car, engaging in snack there. And then we're gonna to go to speech therapy with our friend, Mr. Dennis, who's great and does speech therapy. Then we're gonna get home and unpack those backpacks. Just get all that school paperwork in there, make sure we stay updated with uh, what's going on at the school. Then we're gonna have some dinner. Now, um, that's not actually his dinner, it's the dessert he's had after his dinner, but um, it still applies, I think. Then we're gonna take a bath because he's probably gotten uh, that chocolate uh, on him a decent amount. So uh, we're going to get in the bathtub, and while in the bath, we're going to brush our teeth. Uh, we have a system now where I get him to do it by himself for the count of 20, slow count, and then I'll touch him up for a slow count of 10 afterwards. Then um, 
we'll put our, our pajamas after bath time in order to start settling down for the evening. And then finally, our story time, where we'll read a book. And by then, he's usually um, asleep for the evening. Now, also on your visual schedules, notice that we added on these pockets down here, which you can store all the extra icons that you're not using. Um, and you can add on whichever ones you want. Remember, you or your child could move these from the to-do to the done pile, column rather, uh, through the day. use a visual schedule. As you can see, the visual schedule should be modeled after what your actual day looks like. So when you wake up, you want to have a wake up icon, getting dressed, and as you go through your day, you want those icons to really represent what you're doing. But you use this to help your child predict what comes next. So when you wake up, you want to move that to the done pile, or maybe they don't like it being over here in this done column, so you just slip it in there. But that predictability of, okay, I've woken up and I'm able to move it, this task is complete or it's over, I'm going to go on to the next step. Those are the things that we teach them in school and we work with them on during the day. Their daily schedule looks very similar to what this may look like. Sometimes our students have schedules that are written out a little differently or tailored to their unique needs. But that predictability is something that helps them build into their day to anticipate what comes next. With the anticipation of what comes next, we're going to hope to alleviate some of those behavior issues. If you know that when I pick you up in the afternoon, you get in the car, and then we go to speech therapy today, you know what's coming next. And maybe you won't get so frustrated when that happens. Also thinking about a visual schedule, it helps build planning skills in our minds. So when we can see what we have to do today, we're able to plan and to prepare. Those sudden changes sometimes are very challenging for our students and children, but we wanna give them the opportunity to plan and prepare as much as we can on a normal day-to-day -day basis. By using a visual schedule, the goal is to alleviate some of those surprise meltdowns or some of the challenges by saying, oh look, we have to do this, but then we are gonna do this. And sometimes, as Mr. McGinnis said, we need to prepare those unpreferred activities with things that we really enjoy, like dressing up and being silly. So if your student doesn't like speech therapy, then maybe unpacking their backpack isn't the best choice for what comes next. But maybe you give them a snack or a reward to help them build and help them get excited about what comes next. Because sometimes our children can't see that next step. It's also worth noting that you and your child can get into this visual schedule even more by customizing it. Because that laminated um, surface is on top of the poster, you can put dry erase marker on it, no problem. For instance, with the holiday season approaching, maybe you take a red marker and give your S some pinstripes or your C a little holiday hat. And the nice thing about laminated paper, you could do this with any season or any month or birthday celebrations. The nice thing is this will clean up pretty easily with a wet wipe or some spray cleaner and a paper towel rubs right off there to do for the next one. Okay, so thanks for attending our um, workshop session about visual schedules, and if you need anything, please just contact us. Yes, our hope is that this tool helps you in your day-to-day -day lives at your house.